Okay, so today we are going to laminate a small BK with a easy off lock and go through the steps of what we do with it, how we put our tooling on and everything it takes to do a standard layup on one of these guys. Uh, I've acetated my cast so it's nice and smooth. I put a regular vacuum nylon on it and then I'll pull my PVA bag over it and tie everything off to my anchor and glue my lock on and then we'll start our layup. Get our bag slid on here. And about the really only key on sliding the, P the first PVA bag on is getting it snug enough to where you get rid of a lot of the slack up around your anchor. Because when we tie this off to our anchor, we want to make sure we get rid of all of our crease lines up here and make sure they're not outside of where the lock will be because they'll show up in your, in your lamination when you're done. And it just doesn't look as professional as it should. I'm going to go ahead and tie the top the bottom off here real quick. I'm going to warm this up a little bit, stretch the bag out so we get a really nice tight fit around that anchor. And you can see it drawn in around that anchor. Let's get rid of some of this waste. And this is something I like to do. Open this sack up a little bit and get a hold of my knot that I made in my nylon just to get it out of my way. You certainly don't have to do this, but I just don't like having a lot of waste up there getting in my way. And this is just regular sewing machine thread. You'll notice whenever you have one of our anchors, right underneath of our O-ring, there's a real nice area to tie off with. That's what that groove is put in there for. So you have a place to do exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I'm tied off. I want to get rid of this waste because I don't need it. It just gets in the way. We get ready to seat the lock on top here. And this is the area I was talking about before. I think we can maybe see it in our video. But my bag comes up nice and smooth. I don't have a bunch of wrinkles outside of the anchor area. So everything's nice and smooth. Now I've already pre-prepped my lock. I've glued on my uh, one-shot connector using, and we're using the uh, uh, lever lock, or the, excuse me, the easy off lock. And I've already got everything prepped for it. So now I'm ready to run my glue in here, my Coyote Quick, and glue this on top of my anchor. So what I did to prep this, the first step is take your four screws out uh, of, your, of your latch, or your lever, and then take the tooling piece, and I take some compound four, which you can get through Cascade. You can use other lubricants, but it's a, always a good idea to, to lubricate these tooling pieces. I like to wipe a little bit around my O-ring, and then just put some all over the tooling piece. So I grease the whole thing up. And I wipe off my fingers here, I don't want it all over my lock. And then I'll place it onto my lock, run my four screws in, just like I've done here. Then I take a little bit of clay and I go ahead and clay my holes up. You have five holes here right now. Four of them are for the screws, the hole right in the middle when you're done and you're ready to remove that tooling piece is to run a screw in there and pull that tooling piece out. I also like to put clay in it. It just makes it much easier to get your screw into it if it's not full of resin. Now on this, because it's a lever lock, is a little bit different than the push button, you have to think about the orientation of your lock and where your lever is going to be. So, this person is in this lock when the finished product is going to be like that and the lock is pointed back to the posterior so it opens up in the correct way, the one thing you want to make sure you remember to do when you take that out is get your orientation correct on your tooling. The large end is your tab end when you go to pull that out. It's not a huge thing, but when you start flipping stuff upside down to laminate, you can get this backwards 
And if you were to get this backwards, say like this, and you were actually pointing to the anterior of the leg, when you're done, the way that tooling comes out of there, it leaves you your indentation area and your lock would be facing the wrong direction. You'd be just like that. It'll still work, but now when they open, they have to open it going toward the back of the limb as opposed to it laying this way and they open it like that. Not a huge thing, but it can be an issue. Okay, I went ahead and transferred my alignment already. If I hadn't have transferred my alignment, I had it in a jig to transfer, I would have started out just like this. I'd have had my tooling piece on, all my screws in, everything doped up, put my glue on, oops, set my lock down, Got my lock positioned where I want it, on the medial side, lateral, wherever you want to put your lever at. Taken my leg back out, put it in my transfer jig. Let's get a close-up down here, Rod. Would have had my plates all set up. Drop my lock into place. And made my transfer. So since I've already done that, I've got my transfer, it's a little bit outset. I'm just going to go ahead and glue this on. In the, in, the, in the application we're using it today, it's not critical that I've got a perfect transfer, but it'll be plenty close enough for what we're demonstrating. Once you're done with your, your glued in transfer and you knock out your glue plate, this is what you'll have. It'll be glued in just like that. You have this nice uh, transition lines or T lines in here to lay any kind of stripping you may want to put in during your lamination. Want to gun a little bit out, make sure I've got good flow, run a nice bead around this edge. You don't have to make a perfect seal here, but it's sure a good idea to do that. Not just relying solely on this O-ring to keep resin from getting up inside of your lock chamber. All right, so I push that on, give it a couple of turns, check my edges for any excess and get rid of it. A little bit on that lateral side. So that'll be nice and clean when it's done on the inside. And my alignment looks pretty good there. Alright, as soon as that is set up, we'll be ready to start putting our layers on. And the nice part about the Coyote Quick is it doesn't take long for that to set up. There's really two I think two key things in using this uh, uh, urethane to glue this a lock on here is one is to keep resin from getting up inside that chamber, which our anchor with the O-ring does stop resin from going into it. But second, secondly, and maybe even more important, is when you've glued this lock on, it's going to end up staying exactly where you put it. When you've transferred it, everything will be right in the correct alignment. So when you start laying your layers on, and pulling a PVA bag over and stringing it, you don't get this lock moving and turning up here. You don't want to lose your rotation if you can help from it. That's one of the things I really like about how it seats onto a PVA bag. And then when you're all done and you pull everything out, it peels away from this plastic really nice and it sticks to the PVA bag. So you've got a real nice clean uh, uh, inner part of your lock without having to do a bunch of work getting resin out of it or glue. It sticks to it and holds it in place, but it doesn't make a permanent bond that you can't get rid of. All right, so we're still greased up here. And the other thing using any kind of uh, lubricant, you just want to lubricate where it needs to be. You don't want to get it all over your lock body. It's just bad practice. There we go. Theoretically, you don't have to lubricate this because it doesn't bond to the plastic and you can get it out of a lamination, but it sure is a lot easier to remove when it is lubricated. 